looking for info on how to build the mechanism fusion reactor and turbine combo, then you found the right one. I'm going to cover how to build the multi-block structures, you know, the rules, not just placing blocks, so you can build any size you need. I'm also going to cover what numbers are important so you can size everything correctly, the maths bit. It's easy, I promise. Timestamps are in the description so you can replay sections and skip as needed. If you find this useful, please hit the like button so others can find it and I've heard the YouTube have stopped the subscribe button from working. Give it a test, will you? <coughs> Uh, right, let's start with the turbine. These are the power generators. The reactor does not generate power. They just generate steam to turn the turbine. Start with the turbine because your reactor size is dependent on your turbine size. More on that later. Let's talk about the structure first. The base must be a square, minimum five by five. This is the smallest reactor you can build. Five by five by two, three, four, five. And there's one measly little thing in there but this can generate 73,000 RF per tick. Inside the turbine your rotor shaft must be in the center. Turbine blades need to be added. Right clicking on the shaft will add all the turbine blades you can add. Two are added per shaft. If your rotor shaft is five blocks high you'll have ten blades. On top of the shaft must be the rotational complex and on top of the rotational complex must be one electromagnetic coil. One coil can work four blades. So if you have ten blades you'll need at least three coils to get the full amount out of that. If you only had two and you need a minimum of two electromagnetic coils in your turbine, you'll see in the GUI that this is a limiting factor. If we look at this turbine, you can see I've got 10 blades and three coils. If I take you out and rebuild the reactor, uh, the turbine, you can see this has now got two coils and it says limiting next to it. That's suggesting to me that I've got more blades than the two coils can handle so that's limiting the amount of RF that it kicks out so rotor shaft on top of that rotational complex on top of that electromagnetic coils and an electromagnetic coil can handle four blades at the level where the rotational complex is the interior of that layer must be filled with pressure dispersers ie up to the edge but not the edge below this level the walls can be filled with structural glass casings and at least two turbine valves these are what allow you to put steam in and get power out. We'll talk about vents in a minute. First, saturating condensers. The saturating condensers allow you to get water back out of your turbine. This, these help you create a closed loop. Your reactor is turning water into steam. The steam is turning the turbine. Your saturating condensers turn the steam back into water that you can pump back into your reactor. The saturating condensers go above the pressure dispersers and you can fill the space between the pressure dispersers and the roof with saturating condensers. The more of these you have, the more water you can output, your max water output. When we look at the maths bit, this will make a little bit more sense. Air is allowed above the dispersers and the electromagnetic coils, of course. They have to be touching. So one has to touch the rotational complex. The others have to touch each other. So internally, it could look like this. Layer of pressure dispensers, layer of saturating condensers, vents on the outside. Let's talk about the vents. Vents can fill the gaps in between the edges of the walls and the roof. The edges need to be casings. The more vents you have, the greater the flow rate. Until the volume within the turbine below this layer is reached, each vent adds 16,000 millibuckets per tick to the flow rate. This value, the max flow rate. Remember this number and the max water output number. We'll talk more about them shortly. Adding vents will increase the max flow number. See, it's gone up. You know when you've constructed it all properly, you place your last blocks, you get these red particles that show you it's formed, and when you right click, you get the GUI. The limiting info on the GUI is an indicator to inefficiencies, i.e. I've got two electromagnetic coils in here, maybe I should have three because I've got ten blades, or I may have too many or not enough vents. Have a play and see where these numbers can change. This is a 9 by 9 by 11 sized turbine with a 5 high shaft, 10 blades, and you can see this is going to produce a 
possible 3.8 million RF FE a tick. This one is the maximum size you can build. 18 by 18 by 18. It's got 20 blades, five coils. It's got 585 vents on it. It can produce 53 million RF a tick. There is a problem we may face with this one. Can you guess what it is? Let me know in the comments what you think the problem might be before I tell you. Go on, drop it in the comments now, and then I'll talk about it towards the end of the video. There are formulas for how you can work out the RF per tick your turbine produces. If you're interested, I'll leave links in the description to some great wiki pages that tell you how those formulas work and how to do it. We do need to know how big a reactor we can build that will support this turbine efficiently and without blowing up. Yep, bad things can happen. Before we look at this book, let's quickly look at the structure of the reactor. The reactor is a simple thing. It has to be a cuboid measuring between three by four by three all the way up to 18 by 18 by 18. The base has to be reactor casings and all of the edges have to be reactor casings and the roof has to be reactor casings. Inside, we have fission fuel assemblies in columns that are topped with a control rod assembly. That's pretty much the structure. We can use some clever maths to work out how many fuel assemblies we need and therefore how big a reactor is needed. Ahem. Remember the two values we talked about, max flow and max water output? Whichever one is smallest is the key. Reactor fuel assemblies can burn through 20,000 millibuckets of water a tick. Therefore, if we divide the max flow or output, whichever one was lower, by 20,000, we get the number of fuel assemblies we need in the reactor. Simple. So this turbine, its max flow was 3,360,000, its max water output was 3,072,000, so the smaller number is this one. We divide 3,072,000 by 20,000, we get 153 fuel assemblies needed in our reactor for us to make sure we can fill the reactor with water coming out of this turbine and that we are pushing in enough steam, i.e. less than 3,360,000. We're pushing in enough steam to spin the turbine as quickly as we can and as efficiently as we can. And as if by magic and me being prepared, the reactor behind me has in it 100 43 fuel assemblies so nearly what we needed not quite lower is better it means we will consume everything coming out of this reactor and therefore no big bangs if you wanted to get it maxed out for that turbine you could add 10 more in here make it a bit taller or add a little bit more space our maxed size turbine that we've got here has a max flow of 8,720,000 a max water output of 8816 so we've taken the 8720 divided by 20,000 and we get 936 fuel assemblies. So in our massive reactor we can have 936 fuel assemblies. Actually the largest reactor is 18 by 18 by 18 so that could give you 12 fuel columns and you could go up so high that you would have more than 936. So in this one I've actually done 98 columns 9 high and then I've done 54 of them 10 high. That gives us 932 fuel assemblies. We can see that at this value here which is less than we actually need to fully power this turbine so we'll consume everything we need to consume so no big bangs coming up in a minute we'll talk about piping in and out all of the coolant and steam etc but first let's talk about safe usage of your reactor behind me you can see some redstone in your reactor setup you can include logic adapters there are five here because in the logic adapter you have five different things you can do. You, you can set your redstone to turn the reactor on and off. You can send out a signal when the temperature becomes dangerous, when you get too much waste, and we'll talk about waste in a minute, when the damage is critical or if there's not enough fuel. Set one of these up for each one of those and you are able to, with simple redstone, turn on and off the reactor before it blows up. Not having a nuclear explosion is very useful because these things do cause radiation and radiation can damage your world. One more component of your reactor is the reactor port. These are the things that allow you to pipe in fuel, pipe in water, pipe out waste and pipe out steam. 
Fuel is fissile fuel. I will go into fissile fuel in another video at the moment. This is a creative tank full of fissile fuel and I'm piping that into an input. Green is input. You also use the input to input enough water, as we're talking water cooled, to input water into your reactor to turn that water into steam. You can change these using the mechanism configurator by shift and right clicking on them. And you can see that that has changed in the bottom left there to output waste, output coolant, or input. Outputting waste is very, very important. If your reactor fills up with waste, you will have a problem. So output your waste. You can output the waste into a couple of machines to turn it into polonium and another thing. That will be in another video. For now, I am just outputting this into radioactive waste barrels. Radioactive waste does decay over time. So if your reactor is not running, these will eventually empty. It is important you put it into radioactive waste barrels. Otherwise, you'll have radiation leaks. Another top tip is to use basic cables for your waste because the cable itself has a buffer and you have to let that buffer empty before you can break these cables otherwise you'll have radioactive waste all over your world again so fuel input waste output dealt with now what about water and steam let's talk pipes the different tiers of pipes have different capacities and pump rates. I'm not too worried about the pump rate. The capacity is the important part here. When moving steam into your turbine and water out of your turbine, you want to make sure you have enough capacity that is the same as the max flow rate or max output, depending on which is greater. So you could take out the steam from your reactor and fill your turbine appropriately. If you are not taking out enough steam from your reactor, this will fill up and blow up. If you're not pumping in enough steam, you're not being very efficient. With the water, the same applies. You want to pump out, you want to have enough capacity that matches the max flow or max output, depending on which one's greater. And that means you can get out enough water out of here and pump into there to create a closed loop. You will not need another water supply. So different tiers of pipes have different flow and capacity, and you need to use different pipes for water than you need to use for steam. So in our example, the max flow or output is greater than 3,360,000 megabucks of ticks. So we need pipe capacity to be greater than that. To get steam into our turbine, we use pressurized pipes. To get water out, we use mechanical pipes. If we were to use the advanced pipes, 3,360,000 divided by 16,000, because 16,000 is the capacity of pressurized advanced pipes, we would need 210 pipes. 210 pipes would equal 3,360,000. To get the water from the turbine into the reactor, we divide our number by 8,000 because the advanced mechanical pipe has a capacity of 8,000. That means we would need 420 pipes. So we would need 210 pipes taking the steam into the turbine and we'd need 420 pipes taking the water out of the turbine into the reactor. This is where the tier, it makes a huge difference. Difference. If we use the ultimate, we would only need four pipes or 27 pipes because the capacity of the ultimate mechanical and ultimate pressurized is much, 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 much greater. So we will set our port to coolant out, which is the blue. We will use our ultimate pressurized pipe. So we only need four of these, but we have a greater distance than four to get to over there. I will set this to pull. So it's pulling out and we will connect up a pressurized tube to a turbine valve. This is now going to take the steam that's produced from there into there and we've got plenty of pipes to make sure we get enough steam in. Mechanical pipes can attach to our vents. You can attach it to all of the vents. We don't need an awful lot of these for this size reactor but when you start looking at reactors that are this big this turbine requires 18,720,000 millibuckets per tick and it can output a similar large amount. We need enough pipes to handle 18 million millibuckets a tick. I've attached an awful lot of pipes to my vents to pipe in enough water into here to make a closed loop so I don't need another water source here you don't need to set these to pull they actually will the the vents push water out so this will fill up with water so we can connect our vents to our input and we've created a closed loop. This turbine will kick out enough water into this reactor to keep the reactor filled with water. Now, obviously there is no water yet. So to kick start your reactor, you need to fill it with water first. I'm using a creative water tank, set that to pull. You can use the mechanism pump. You could use laser IO, but you can now see this is pulling water out of my water source 
and filling this reactor. Once the reactor's full, we don't need this anymore because the turbine will be providing enough water. We've got fuel, we've got our waste going into barrels. We're full of water. Should we turn it on? We are on. Marvellous. Important bits to be aware of. I can set, it starts off with a very low burn rate. You can set the rate of which you want to burn. So if I set that down to one, we are producing not much at all. And over at our turbine, we are producing 22,000 FE a tick with that one burn rate. The maximum burn rate we can go up to is 143. My recommendation is to set it a bit lower and work your way up to that. So burn rate of 50. Are we handling enough water? We are. Let's remove this water source. Do we still have enough water? And this is the closed loop. We have enough water coming in from our turbine, coming into this thing, and therefore we're okay. So we can go up a bit higher. Let's go up to 100. We can see now our burn rate is nearly at max. 143 is the max. Do we still have enough water? And we do, look, it's just holding at 11746051010. How much? power is this producing now? We are producing 2 million FE a tick. Let's pop this all the way up to max. 143. And we can see now water is still maintaining. Heat is fine. We are doing well. This should now be producing nearly 3, 3 million FE a tick. Should we turn on the mega reactor? Let's check what we're set to. So I want to set my burn rate to 100. I was at 500 because I've tested this before and I want to activate and we can see coolant levels are staying stable. This is really important that this stays stable. We have a, a turbine now that's spinning that's actually producing 5 million FE a tick. Let's bump it up to 500. Our coolant levels are stable got no other water source here there's no other way of getting water in this tank is not connected all the water for this is coming out of this turbine that's that closed loop and you can see this is now producing 28 and a half million fe a tick now we should be able to go up to 900 but let's see what happens 700 coolant level is fine damage is not occurring our temperature inside has now gone into the orange area though but we are producing nearly 40 million fe a tick with this setup did you guess what the problem is going to be correctly huh this is the problem with this size reactor if i try and go to 800 my alarm is going off That's one of these guys. If I do that again. It's this guy. High temperature. I can only run this at 700 millibuckets a tick burn rate. I've got 250 more millibuckets to go, but I can't do anything with it. Well. You can use sodium to cool these things down, but we're going to leave that for another video. I think that just about covers everything you need to know about the turbine and water-cooled reactors. Hopefully you found all of the information helpful. Smash the like button, you know. Oh, and don't forget to test that subscribe button. Honestly, <laughs> I think it's not working. <laughs> right, soon there will be videos for the sodium-cooled reactor and fissile fuel and handling nuclear waste. Honestly, see you soon.